Do you want to know how to run a great book discussion group for kids? I'm Nicolene Peck and I have led a ton of book discussion groups for adults and kids and I'm really excited to talk about this. Normally I'm talking about parenting and how to help build strong family bonds through good relationships by applying the principle of self-government, but in this video we're talking about something that changes hearts and minds in a different way and that is discussion. <laughs> In this video, we're going to be talking about book discussions, why you'd want to have a book discussion with children, how to lead a great one with children, and what types of books you might want to select. Years ago, I made the decision that wasn't so popular at the time to homeschool my children. So I did therapeutic treatment care for foster children for a lot of years, but I also have four children of my own. I wasn't able to homeschool the foster children, so they went to the more traditional schooling path but my children my four children were all homeschooled all the way up and if there's one thing that i really wanted as part of their homeschool environment it was discussion because discussion is actually one of the greatest environments of learning i don't know if you know that but that's what all of the greatest minds do they get together and discuss with other great minds this opens doors it opens thought it solves problems it really takes the learning that you're gaining from somebody else or another source and it invests it deep so that you don't forget it. So having those moments of discussion are really powerful for a person. I wanted to have a discussion group for my children. A friend of mine decided to start a family discussion group. This was a great example to me. She had a group of families who would read books and once a month we would get together and we would discuss as full families and the parents had to hold back and not say a lot so that the children would get the opportunity to speak. Now this brings me to one of the problems that many people find while having a child or youth book discussion and that is that sometimes they're a little shy to talk and sometimes it's hard to get them to open up so that the book discussion is actually effective because the whole point of a book discussion is that people get the chance to share their ideas. Sure, we want them to learn from other people's ideas too, but you always learn the most by what you shared whenever you were discussing with someone else. So making sure that each person gets an opportunity to share is something you definitely want to do in your book discussion. The problem is not everybody wants to share. So how do you get them on the same page with wanting to share? And then what types of materials will get them sharing as well? Let's talk about that. But before we do, click that subscribe button so that you don't miss other great videos just like this. So how do we set up this environment, this book discussion, in a way that everyone will feel like they want to contribute. Well, the very first thing that you have to do is give everyone a vision of why you're having the book discussion in the first place, because for sure there's a percentage of the people coming who are nervous. They don't want to talk in front of everybody else. They don't want to say something that later they feel like is wrong or is dumb or something like that. And so, it's so hard for them to feel like the environment is safe. So you definitely wanna give everyone a vision for why they're there, what's the whole point of this group anyway? So the whole point of this group is what? You're gonna ask them, why are we even here? Get them talking, see what they say. They could come up with some good ideas, but hopefully you will bring out one way or another that the whole point of the group is for them to learn from themselves and that the best way to learn from yourself is to talk. And that sometimes when you talk, you realize you were wrong and that's okay. And sometimes you talk and you realize you were right and that's okay. So it's okay to say something in a book discussion group that isn't correct or that isn't even fully true. And then later to go, wait a second, I think I'm gonna change my mind on that. That's actually just being honest. That's how people learn. So it's okay. You also want to explain to them that a book discussion is not very fun for the people in the group if one person is talking the whole time. And they need to ask themselves the question, 
am I the one that talks the whole time? And if you know the answer is yes, that you're the one that talks the whole time, then what you need to do is be selective with what times you choose to talk and not. Maybe even make yourself a rule that before you will give a comment, at least two other people or three other people have to give a comment in between your last comment and this comment. You don't want to hold people to a certain number of comments because, you know, sometimes the conversation really gets going and you do want to hear what everybody has to say and they want to have that engaging time where they're learning so much. So they should be able to comment as much as they want, but not when they're monopolizing the entire group. So teach them how to not monopolize by waiting their turn from time to time and occasionally recognizing if someone else says something they thought of to drop the subject in their brain and let it go and just focus on listening to someone else. Now this brings me to another thing that we learn in a book discussion group, which is that we learn to listen to other people instead of just listen to the thoughts in our own head. Head. So listening to the thoughts in your own head is important so that you can form your thoughts properly and share them with others. But when you're in a book discussion group or any type of a discussion group for that matter, you want to make sure that you're spending a good percentage of your time listening to what the other people have to say and asking yourself, where are they coming from? Why would they think that? I wonder where they got that idea. Asking questions about what they're saying so that then instead of just saying something, you could ask somebody a clarifying question instead. Asking someone a question based off their statement shows that you're listening and is very mature. So teach your children how to do that. Maybe even have a practice session with that where they break out in groups, one person speaks, the other person listens, and then asks clarifying questions. Then they switch persons and do that again. In fact, you could do that at the beginning of every book discussion for the first few times. This would help everyone get the idea that they need to listen listen to the other people and not just be the ones talking. But what if no one talks? Because that's a real thing. Some children are so timid they don't want to say anything. Or some of them are so perfectionistic they don't want to say anything. So guess what you do? You tell them, hey, if we have a time when nobody is saying anything and nobody is discussing, no worries. We'll just sit in silence until someone comes up with something to say. I'm okay sitting in silence. I'm not going to take your discussion time. And I know that sometimes when there's moments of silence, that means people are thinking out what has been said and what they want to say. So we will give you plenty of time. Ah. Now what about the person who takes the discussion group off course? So they leave the discussion about the book and start talking about something else. Well, those people are very easily dealt with. What you do is at the beginning of the discussion group, you say, okay, if someone goes off topic too far, like it's okay a little bit, but if we get off topic a little too far or for too long, then as the leader of the discussion group, I'll just say, oh, hey, let's get back to the topic. Like that was really interesting, but let's get back. And so you just tell everyone ahead of time that could happen to any of you. So don't worry about it. We just want to make sure that we keep it on topic for all the people who came prepared to discuss the content. We don't want to leave it too soon or too far. So let's talk about what type of content we do want to have to discuss. So if you want to have a really good, robust discussion, you've got to have some rich content to draw off of. Now I know for children, sometimes that's a little bit more difficult because their reading levels might be not quite up to the level of say Dickens yet or something like that. But you want to go more toward classics anyway. There are simplified versions of classic books that you can read with children. There are some smaller books that I would still consider to be a classic. I love reading um, Treasures of the Snow and Snow Treasure. Both of those actually are very good. Um, the Whipping Boy, uh, Otto of the Silver Hand. These are small books that they could read. Um, the Sign of the Beaver. These are great books that they can get through quickly 
and that they could discuss. Also, if you happen to be into biography and you want your children to love biography, you can discuss biographies here and there. The Childhood of Famous Americans series is incredible. There's also Childhood of Famous World Figures series that you can draw from. They, they talk about their childhood and how they became the person that they are, and it's often very interesting. Young girls could read um, things like the the uh, American Girl books, I only like the ones that were written before the year 2000. The ones written afterward are a little bit like meh. But um, the ones written before 2000 are good. There are books like um, the Little House on the Prairie series by Laura Ingalls Wilder. Those are great for discussion. Try to find a book that is classical. It's rich in content. It's deep. It has a lot of depth. Maybe even it leads towards some mature thinking, some thinking about adult skills, adult problems even, so that it can prepare them to grow up a little bit as well. I absolutely love the the Little Britches series by Ralph Moody. Those were books that we read multiple times with my children in our homeschool environment. I, I mean, I could give book recommendations like nobody's business. If you would like book recommendations, I'll tell you where you really should go. So I have a Teaching Self-Government podcast. And if you find the Teaching Self-Government podcast, you will see there is an entire podcast about my book recommendations. And it's not even complete, but there are a lot of them there. There's also an entire podcast about game recommendations, movie recommendations, all kinds of things. But of course, there's tons of podcasts about parents too. So be sure to check out the Teaching Self-Government podcast today.